Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, I'm going to look at the taxation of cryptocurrency. Usually, I have accounting and CPA lectures in this session. It's about cryptocurrency, but specifically about the taxation aspect of cryptocurrency. This is an educational video. This is not a tax advice. But after you, after you view this video, you should be able to speak to your accountant, your tax advisor, to your CPA about your cryptocurrency. So this is basically for educational purposes, not as a tax advice as of today the topic of cryptocurrency specifically is not covered on the cpa exam however the taxation of the cryptocurrency the cryptocurrency is not different than any other property so the taxation topic of it will help you understand uh, the taxation of property on the exam but the cryptocurrency as of today i'm not aware that it's covered i'm i'm i am positive that in the future it will be covered before we start i would like to remind you my viewers to connect with me i do have a linkedin account i'm very active on linkedin please connect with me on LinkedIn. If you don't have a LinkedIn account, I strongly suggest you do create a LinkedIn account. YouTube is where I house all my lectures. I have over 1400 accounting, taxes, audit, CPA lectures on YouTube. Please uh, visit my YouTube, subscribe, like, share, uh, share the recordings. Please follow me on Instagram and I do have a Facebook account. So let's start talking about the IRS and cryptocurrency because if we're talking about taxation, you cannot ignore the IRS. It's the 800 pound gorilla in the room. So the, the, what you need to know is the only regulation or the only guidance that the IRS issued was a notice in 2014. And I put the link in the description for you if you'd like to look at it. And most of this lecture is based on this link. And that's the only thing that they have. I believe it's seven or eight pages. When I read it, it's pretty straightforward in a sense of understanding it. But there's, it leaves a lot of gray areas for practitioners. Um, the first thing is you want to know is the meaning of cryptocurrency. The meaning of it is it's a virtual convertible currency, not actual currency. So they don't consider the cryptocurrency like the pesos, the yen, um, the euros, or anything like that. It's it's a virtual convertible currency. And the what's the IRS looking for is compliance. The IRS wants to make sure that individuals who are trading cryptocurrency are declaring specifically their gains, not their losses their gains because if you have gains you have to pay taxes on the gains and two in 2015 only 802 investors declared that they traded and made profit on cryptocurrency so you would say i would if i have to guess it's an under under reporting people are not reporting uh their gains what was the sum of the IRS responses? The IRS partnered with a data analytical company called the Chain Analysis to track, visualize, and analyze Bitcoin transaction to uncover any tax evasions of gains. So they want to make sure that if you are participating in cryptocurrency, you are um, you are generating gains, you're, you're going to have to pay taxes. Now, how are you going to pay taxes? Is it capital gains? Is it ordinary income? We'll talk about this shortly. That's the purpose of this. Also, the IRS pressured Coinbase, which one of the major exchanges for cryptocurrency, to identify users that traded more than $20,000 in Bitcoin between 2013 and 2015. So notice the IRS is cracking on, not cracking, they just want to uncover any, uh, any individuals that are, that are trading the currency and obviously making profit from the currency. So the way I'm going to explain this is, starting by walking you through some examples and the best way to illustrate this is what is the source of your cryptocurrency so i'm going to walk you through an individual so how can an individual obtain obtain cryptocurrency and based on that i'll explain the taxation topic so there are the first thing you can do is you can work for your cryptocurrency earn it earn it through wages or through self-employment and i'll tell you i had my own experience i had a lawyer contacted me from la he wanted me to do to train his staff about schedule c about taxation and he said he's going to pay me in cryptocurrency and that's a couple of years ago and i did not really understand what cryptocurrency was but if he paid me with cryptocurrency that would have been considered earnings for me wages okay so one way to get cryptocurrency is through wages and we're going to talk about what are the tax consequences if they are considered wages or self-employment income another way to obtain cryptocurrency is to take your own money fiat money currency and buy bitcoin buy cryptocurrency so you can buy it from another party from another person from an exchange buy it basically exchange your money that's another way to do so 
A third way to obtain cryptocurrency is someone will gift it to you. Someone, somebody will give you some cryptocurrency. And I know one individual that somebody just gave them some cryptocurrency. And sometimes they do so to, to, to encourage you, to entice you to start buying and selling. Just for disclosure purposes, I never ever bought cryptocurrency, although I can, I trade on regular basis in the stock market more than regular basis. So I am, I am a trader, but I never looked into cryptocurrency. I know it's not well regulated and that's why I'm away from it. So just FYI for disclosure purposes so don't think i'm trying to sell you cryptocurrency matter of fact i would say avoid something you don't understand i, I don't understand cryptocurrency i understand the taxation of it just fyi okay uh, the other way you can obtain cryptocurrency is exchange it you might have bitcoin and you might exchange it into alt, old coins so exchange one currency into another what are the tax consequences there uh, you can mine cryptocurrency if you mine the cryptocurrency, you obtain it from mining, and we're going to talk about what does it mean by mining and what are the tax consequences. And the last topic I will talk about is something called reporting issues. What are you re what are you required to report as as an individual involved in cryptocurrency somehow? And we'll look at what's called TPSO, third party settlement organization, and they use the form 1099K. We'll look at those as well because that's relevant for what we are what we're going to be talking about so the first thing we're going to look at and be, before we proceed is there any other scenario that i did not cover here of course there is but th i believe those are most common scenarios that i'm i'm going to try to explain so the first common scenario is you earned it you earned the cryptocurrency you earned it you work for it okay so you work for it okay so just let's review the irs does not treat it as a currency that generate foreign currency gains and losses because that will take us down to a different route. So that's not the case. So how does the IRS looks at cryptocurrency from a tax perspective? Well, easy. Cryptocurrency is treated as a property as far as the IRS is concerned. Now, if you're a CPA, if you are a practitioner and I told you this is a property, not specifically, not real property, not real estate, then you should know basically this is the key this is the key to everything that you need to know assuming you know what does property mean when it comes to taxation but this is i just gave you the answer basically but i'm going to explain everything you need to know but it's considered a property so what does that mean well think about it property means what property means if you provided a service let's start let's assume you work for it so i am a plumber so i provided i provided you a service so i'm the plumber i went to your house i fixed your sink um, okay, as a result, you don't have cash to pay me. You gave me this joystick. Okay, it's for your PlayStation. This joystick is worth $200. So I spent two hours fixing your sink. I charge you an hour each. You don't have the cash. You gave me this joystick. I walked away happy with that joystick. That joystick is considered a property. I obtained the property in exchange in exchange for my service. So guess what? I have, if I am a self-employed individual, I have revenue of two hundred dollars okay now let's switch this and let's assume you gave me one unit let's assume you gave me one unit of a cryptocurrency coin called litcoin just kind of just to give you an example you gave me one unit and that's equivalent to two hundred dollars so you don't have this joystick you have some cryptocurrency and you gave me that one unit well guess what i have revenue of two hundred dollars Okay, so it's assuming that Litcoin is worth $200 per unit. So what do I need to do? I need to include the fair market value of the virtual currency received measured in US dollars as of the date of the virtual currency is received. So if you gave me that one unit of Litcoin and it's worth on that date, each unit is worth $200. Guess what? I have wages. I have taxable income. No, I'm sorry, not wages. I have revenue. Now, if I'm um, if I am an employee, then I have wages. Okay, so let's assume, just for the sake to illustrate this, John Doe, and I'm going to be abbreviating this John Doe JD throughout this recording, received one unit of Bitcoin for home remodeling. So for home remodeling, he received one unit. The fair market value of the Bitcoin BTC, that's the symbol for it, is eight thousand dollar on the date of the receipt. So John Doe remodeled your home. You don't have cash to pay John Doe, so you pay John Doe. Tell him you know what. You remodel my kitchen, I'm going to give you one unit of Bitcoin. And the day that you receive that Bitcoin, it's worth $8,000. Guess what? You have income of $8,000. It's regular income. It's taxed on your ordinary rate, whatever your ordinary rate is. If you're self-employed, you include this with your income. Let's assume you are an employee of a company and they paid you in Bitcoin. If you're an employee now and they pay you in Bitcoin, then you have also ordinary income. 
It's taxed on your ordinary rate, subject to federal income tax withholding, uh, social security um, withholding, FICA, FUDA, federal insurance, country, federal insurance, uh, state insurance, everything. And must be reported on your W-2. So if you're an employee, it just it's as if they paid you cash. And how much is the cash? The value of that current, the value of the currency on the date that you received it. Okay, that they have to find out what's the value. So how is the fair fair market value determined? It's there's exchanges, and you'll have to determine what is the fair value of that currency on that date. You could always go back and look it up if you receive the currency, because they should have a record just like you have a stock. And this is an example of certain prices for the uh, currency. Just to give you an idea, for example, Bitcoin. I don't know what date is this. It was traded at eight thousand seven hundred nine dollars. Um, Ethereum 272, XRP 45 pennies, so on and so forth. Okay, um, so that's that. Now, so now you earn that, you, you remodeled the home and you earned that one Bitcoin. Okay, and that Bitcoin now considered property. So you have it in your, in your account, virtually in your account somewhere, in your virtual wallet. You have one Bitcoin that's worth, remember, it's worth $8,000. When you received it, it was worth $8,000, right? It was worth $8,000. Now, this is a property for you. The basis, now, this is important. Now, now it went from, it was wages to you, and it was tax. So, you had to pay taxes. You pay, you're going to have to pay taxes on this wages. You have to pay taxes on the $8,000. Then, assuming you pay the taxes, not assuming you pay the tax on this $8,000. Now that property, remember, Bitcoin, you have one unit of Bitcoin. The basis, when you acquired it, it's the fair market value on the date it was received. The basis of that property is $8,000. And basis is important because what's going to happen? You're not going to keep this Bitcoin forever. You're going to have to do something with it. What can you do with that Bitcoin? Think about it. What can you do with that one unit of Bitcoin? What can John Doe do? Well, they can sell it. They can sell it to somebody else on the exchange. They can purchase goods and services with it on eBay. They can exchange it for another currency. They don't like this currency. They might change it into Litecoin. Or they may gift it to someone else. Those are the possible scenarios that John Doe might do. Okay, there's another scenario. They can keep it until they die and it gets inherited. Okay, we're not going to talk about this, but it's going to be treated as a property with a basis of $8,000 as far as we are concerned. So let's assume one month later, just kind of work through these scenarios, John Doe sold this one unit of Bitcoin for $9,000. Now remember, uh, John Doe paid taxes on the $8,000 and his basis became $8,000. Now if he sold it for $9,000, his adjusted basis are $8,000, so he had a $1,000 short-term capital gain. Why short-term capital gain? Because he held it less than a year. I said a month later. Okay, it, that that one thousand dollar is taxed at ordinary income up to not thirty nine point five up to thirty nine point five. It could be zero if if they are in the low bracket uh, low bracket taxes. So depending what your tax rate is and based on your ordinary tax rate, you'll pay taxes on this. Why do you, why do you use ordinary in, ordinary rate? Because you held it short term, so it's a capital gain and it's short term. Okay, now. Let's assume you waited one year plus. You waited, John Doe waited more than one year. Then, and assume they sold it for 9,000, that, 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 that 1,000 becomes long-term capital gain. Long-term capital gain treatment is different. Long-term capital gain, you may either pay no taxes depending on your income. If your income is low, there's a threshold, you pay no taxes. You, you might pay 15% or you might pay up to 20%. Okay, now if you're interested, hold on a second. What is he talking about long-term capital gain? Go to my tax course and I'll explain to you long-term capital gain, how is it taxed at 0, 15 or 20, okay? But generally speaking, not generally speaking, long-term, if you hold something long-term, if you have a capital gain that's long-term, generally speaking, you pay less taxes than short-term, okay? So you want to hold it long-term, okay? Let's assume, on the other hand, John Doe sold his one unit at 7,000. Well, what does 7,000 mean? His basis were eight thousand. Remember, the basis were the basis were eight thousand. He sold his Bitcoin for seven thousand. John Doe needed money, and that was the fair market value. So guess what? John Doe will have a capital loss of a thousand dollar. Capital loss of a thousand dollar. Capital loss can offset capital gains. So if John Doe has capital gains from other transactions, stocks, bonds. So let's talk about property and to be more specific i mean i should have i should have explained this a little bit little bit more in detail 
cryptocurrency is a, is a property, but it's considered capital asset. So they have capital gains that would that will have capital gains and capital losses. So that one thousand dollar of losses can offset capital gains, whatever capital gains they have from other crypt from other cryptocurrency or from other capital from other capital gain. Okay. Any capital gain loss remained. Let's assume they have a lot of capital losses. Guess what? You can deduct up to 3,000 of net capital gain losses against ordinary income. So after all said and done, if you still have, let's assume, 10,000 of losses for that year from cryptocurrency, of that 10,000, you can deduct 3,000 against ordinary income and the 7,000 because it's capital losses you can carry for future years. So the capital losses, you can use some of it, 3,000, and the rest you can carry. Okay, and the same concept would apply if John Doe purchased a computer for nine thousand dollars. Let's assume John Doe, rather than selling the securities for nine thousand, he went there and he, he bought a computer for nine thousand dollars, supercomputer. Okay, for nine thousand dollars. Guess what? Because he bought the computer for nine thousand dollars, exchanging the Bitcoin, John Doe has a capital gain of a thousand dollars because his basis in the property. And the one Bitcoin is 8,000 and he exchange it for something that's 9,000. Well, you have a capital gain of 1,000. Same concept applied if he buy the computer for 7,000. He incurred the loss of $1,000. And the same concept would apply if John Doe exchange that one Bitcoin into another cryptocurrency. So if he exchange it for $9,000 worth of Litcoin, because he gave them one unit that's worth for him, not worth for him. His basis is 8,000. They gave him something that's worth 9,000. John Doe has $1,000 worth of capital gain, whether it's short term or capital gain, short term or long term, depending on how long he held that property. But he does have a capital gain. And if he exchanged it for Litcoin that's worth $7,000 today, well, he exchanged something 8,000 that's worth 7,000. You might say, why is he being taxed on this exchange? It's as if John Doe sold it for $7,000, incurred the loss, took that $7,000 and bought Bitcoin. Or as if John Doe sold the, the uh, Bitcoin for $9,000, took the $9,000 and bought, bought Bitcoin. So that's why the exchange is considered a realizable transaction, a taxable transaction. Okay. What happened when you purchase the cryptocurrency? Now what you do is you take your own money, fiat money, and you purchase cryptocurrency like Bitcoin. The most important thing is here is to know your basis. And what, what is it generally your basis? Generally, your basis is generally speaking, it's what you paid for the for, for the uh, for the item plus maybe some necessary fees commission. But generally speaking, it's what you pay. So let's assume John Doe went out to a one of the exchanges and bought one unit of Bitcoin for eight thousand dollars. Now, he did not earn it. He did not earn the Bitcoin. He purchased it. Now, it becomes very important to determine what John Doe is going to do with this property. So, he has a property in his hand, and that property is one unit, one unit of Bitcoin. Well, it could be that he acquired it for investment purposes, or he could have acquired it for trade or business. Now, we have to explain this. I'll try to simplify it as much as possible. Okay. So I am a college professor. That's what I do for a living. I'm also a YouTuber. Assuming I bought this one unit of Bitcoin, okay? Am I in the business of buying and selling cryptocurrency? Not at all. Most probably, I am an investor. I'm just an, I bought this Bitcoin just like I would bought any other stock like Apple computer stock from the stock market. So depending on you're holding this property, what what are you holding it for? So I would have to say, I mean, I'm not gonna I'm, I'm I'm just going to make a general statement that most people, when they buy cryptocurrency, they buy it for investment purposes. If it's an investment, it's considered capital asset. It's considered a capital asset. It means when you sell it, you have a capital gain or you have a capital loss. If you hold it for a trade or a business, what does it mean if you, if you bought it and you have it for a trade or a business? It means that's what you do for a living. For a living, you buy and sell cryptocurrency. That's your trade or a business. Now, how do you, how do you determine if some if someone is in the trade or a business of buying and selling cryptocurrency? Well, that's what they do day in and day out. Eight hours a day, they buy and sell cryptocurrency and that's all what they do. If that's the case, it might be considered trade or a business. Now, the IRS does not define what's considered trade or a business as far as cryptocurrency. Basically, you are becoming quasi uh, a dealer, a dealer or broker in cryptocurrency. And again, if you look at the at the PDF form, they, they don't say what, what qualify, what are the criteria, specifically what are the criteria 
but I would have to say if that's what you do, if that's the only thing that you do, you might be in the business of buying and selling. And there are other criteria that you have to meet the IRS requirement. Okay, if you if you treat it as a trade or a business, and we'll talk about the consequences about this, about whether it's for investment purposes or for trade and business. So if it's in your hand and it's for investment purposes, which what most the vast vast majority of people, it's considered a capital asset. Whether you exchange it, whether you sold it, the same concept that I gave you earlier when John Doe sold or exchanged the Bitcoin will apply here. If you exchange it from one cryptocurrency into the other, Section 1031 like kind exchange does not apply. And this is important. There's a lot of confusion that this is a property. And a lot of people think if you if I exchange one property into another property, it's it's a tax deferred transaction. What does it mean tax deferred? It means if you have a gain, you don't have to pay taxes, you can defer it. This does not apply to cryptocurrency. Remember when we exchange Bitcoin to Litcoin, what I told you is it's as if you sold it, took the cash, and bought the Litcoin. So section 1031 applies to real estate so it has nothing to do with cryptocurrency so so like kind exchange does not apply i just want to put it here section 1031 just to kind of make it explicit it does not apply okay but why because the assumption is you sold and you bought another currency now if you transfer your cryptocurrency from one exchange to another now what you did is you took your one bitcoin and took it from one exchange from for example from coinbase and you went to Bitrix. you 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 transfer your property you transferred your property you did not sell it you did not exchange it that's not a not a taxable event if you transfer it okay and again short term and long term capital gain rules would apply whether you whether you uh, hold it less than a year or more than a year and guess what for investment purposes, you have to fill out form 8949. You have to fill out form 8949. Let's take a look at form 8949 just to give you an idea how this, this whole thing works. So once you see it, you might say, okay, now it makes a little bit more sense. So let's take a look at form 8949. So this is form 8949, sales and other disposition of capital asset. So what you have to do, you have to put here in the description, the description of the property, you know, 50 units of Litcoin. When did you bought it? Date acquired here, the date acquired, date sold, date disposed of, how much did you receive? What are your cost basis? So let's assume uh, uh, you, you received, let me just give this example here, since we worked this example earlier, I'm not sure if I can type here or not. I can't type on this. I don't know why I can't type in these boxes. So you, for example, you, the proceeds as you put nine thousand. Your cost basis will be eight thousand, and you have a gain of a thousand. You have a gain or a loss of a thousand, and you add up all of your all of your uh, transaction. This will include the stocks, the bonds, everything else. Actually, you can you can type now. I see. You just have to tab. Okay. So this will be date acquired 01 15 2019. Date disposed of. 3 10 2019 the proceeds were nine thousand dollar cost basis were eight thousand there is no adjustments to anything and i have a gain of a thousand whether this is short term or long term depending on how long i held this so on and so forth but this is the form 8949 you, you list all your um you, you list all the property transaction whether it's short term whether it's short term part one or long term part two let's get back to the powerpoint presentation okay so i showed you form 8949 just to give you an idea and just hopefully once you see it it's like oh, okay this makes sense now um what's important here is record keeping because you remember you notice i showed you have to know the proceeds and how much you paid for something well keep track of your record okay download your record from the exchange if that's the case uh, larger exchanges usually keep track of this, but you cannot rely on them. What if they lost their data? The, the, the bad thing is, well, the bad, I'm not going to make say bad or good. There is no requirement. Now, some people say this is for them. This is good. Some say that this is not good. There are no requirements for the, the, the RS does not require the, the exchanges to keep any track. That's a good thing. That's a bad thing. Again, I'm trying to stay away from the word good or bad. Because let, let me let me tell you what I mean by this. If you own stocks and bonds and investments, and let's assume you have an account with um, 
uh, Charles Schwab or Merrill Lynch. What they have to do, they have to send you a 1099B, which is a report of all your transaction, and they will send a copy to the IRS as well. As of today, if you own this, this cryptocurrency, the IRS don't really receive anything formally from the exchanges. So in a sense, it's self-reporting. In a sense, you are responsible for keeping track. In a sense, you could be in trouble if you were audited. And there are other ways for the IRS to know because sometimes those the information is public, not necessarily with your name, but they might be able to track it. So just FYI, since there are no requirements, make sure you keep track of your of your uh, of your transaction. In the future, I would I will bet on it. In the future, I don't know when, but at some point, the IRS will require those exchanges to report transaction. Um, I'll, I will say this with confidence, but I cannot, you know, I cannot be 100% confidence. So remember, you are required to pay taxes on your gains. Um, it, they, they, might be, they, they may not be traced today immediately by the IRS, but in the future, they might be. And there's a website called cointracking.info. If you go there, um, they, they have a place where you can keep track of this. It's really interesting. So this is, we talked about investment purposes. So you bought the Bitcoin and this is for investment purposes. And this is what most people do. They buy Bitcoin and they have it for investment purposes. Let's assume you bought the Bitcoin and you are in the business of trading the Bitcoin. So you're in the business, that's all what you do. And this is basically not a lot of people I'll have to say. Well, then what, whatever you bought is considered inventory, not capital asset. And what's considered inventory, it's an ordinary asset. Ordinary assets are subject to ordinary income. So capital gains and capital losses are, don't no longer applies here. Here you have ordinary income. So if you make any profit, you have ordinary income, not, not capital gains, not capital asset, not capital gains and capital losses. Okay, whether you exchange it or sold it, you have ordinary income. So if you bought something for nine to eight thousand, sold it for nine, the, the thousand dollar difference. So now if you bought something for eight, sold it for nine, you have a one thousand dollar of ordinary income. Okay, versus here, if you if you bought something for eight, sold it for nine, it's a capital. Gain. Okay. It's different. The way it's treated, it's different. Okay. Then you are subject to self-employment tax based on your net earnings. That means you could have expenses related to your business. You have ordinary income, ordinary losses. The, the loss will apply as well, and the loss can be can be uh, offset against other ordinary income. Again, it's taxed at ordinary income. You could have Schedule C, S Corporation, C Corporation. You could be operated just like a business, just like any other business. Now, also bear in mind, I just want to make quick comment here. Again, I'm not giving any tax advice. I'm not. This is just for informational, educational purposes. Also, you may think you have a trade or a business or the IRS might say you have this. They might consider what you do as a hobby. Now, when would the IRS consider something as a hobby? I'm not going to go over this. If you're interested, you can go to my uh, uh, income tax course and there are rules for hobby. And when, when something is considered a hobby, you can deduct expenses up to your income. So you cannot deduct your losses. Okay. But generally speaking, it's investment purposes or trade. Again, the IRS, this is a great, still a great area for the IRS. Let's talk about briefly about initial coin offering or ICO. It sounds like IPO, initial public offering. So what is an ICO? Well, we'll talk about ICO in a moment. So the first thing we want to determine is cryptocurrency a security per the SEC? What is a security? A security involved the investment of, of, of money, the investment of money in common enterprise in which investors expect primary profit primarily from the effort of others. And what's a security is when you people pull their money together, you put money in an enterprise, and you expect to benefit from that, benefit from the profit while others are making an effort. Basically, in a sense, like a quote unquote passive income. You invest money, you don't do anything, and your money is working for you in that enterprise. Okay? So what happened when you invest? and an ICO, initial coin offering. Investors in ICO receive token, like a cryptocurrency. What are we talking about here? Let's assume a new crypt cryptocurrency, new exchange is created. So what they do is this. They will come to you and they would say, we are starting this exchange. Would you be interested in, in contributing money? So what you do is you give them money, you give them money so they can hire programmers, they can, they can buy computers, they can buy computing power to create the exchange so you give them money so they can mine 
cryptocurrency or they can create the cryptocurrency and what happened as a result they will give you a token like some cryptocurrency money okay um, let's assume for your effort they gave you 10 units of this currency now you hope that once this currency is up and running those 10 units are worth something and you can sell it later so when you invest you get a token it's like basically buying stocks in an initial public offering it's called the stocks let's think about think of it as a token and rather than an IPO you invest in an ICO okay why is this important to determine if a secure if, if, if an ICO is a security or not a security per the SEC there's something called the wash sales does the wash sales apply if something considered a security what's gonna happen is this if you sold something today at a loss okay if you sold something today at a loss and if you bought it back within 30 days before um 30 days after let's say 30 days after if you bought it 30 days after or 30 days before then that loss cannot be deducted it's considered a wash sale what can you do with that loss that loss is added to your cost basis of that new security because you bought it so you sold it at a loss be careful if you sold something at a loss you want to wait 30 days until you buy it again otherwise if it's security the wash sale would apply if it's not a security the wash sale does not apply and that's why we need just kind of we kind of went off track here to talk about securities generally speaking what's considered security and what's not likely considered a security by the sec and notice that language generally it's very vague not likely not likely considered a security if you have a bitcoin not likely a security and ethereum not likely a security those two are not likely a security again this is a gray area by the ir by the sec now we're talking about the sec okay because if it's if it's a security then different rules would apply for the irs and those are not likely a security if you invest in any other ico generally speaking it's considered a security and i emphasize again it's a gray area the sec said we're going to consider it case by case basis so just fyi whether your currency is a security or not it makes a difference for the wash wash sale um one let's assume you received one bitcoin and was gifted to you somebody gave it to you so what is your basis because remember you have to know your basis well theoretically your basis is zero how much did you pay for something technically zero now let me ask you this do you want your basis to be zero and the answer is no way because if you have something with a basis of zero it means whatever you sold it for it's all gain so there are special rules for, as far as tax purposes when it comes to gifts okay so here's what the rules are if the fair market value of the gift greater than or equal to to the donor basis on the date of the gift the basis transferred to you what does that mean let's assume the basis the one that gave you the gift the donor bought the bitcoin for eight thousand and the day they gave it to you the bitcoin was worth nine thousand five hundred if that's the case if the donor if that if your rich uncle is giving you this property and that property is a gain today it has a gain it has an unrealized gain basically a built-in gain then guess what their basis is your basis therefore when you sell it when you sell it your basis is eight thousand so if you sold it for less than eight thousand you have a loss if you sold it more more than eight thousand you have a gain what happened if your fair market what happened if the fair market value is less or equal to the donor basis on the date of the gift in this situation what's happened is your rich uncle is giving you that one bitcoin but on that date the value of the bitcoin is six thousand your rich uncle bought it for eight and it's worth six in this situation you might have dual basis and technically like really what we call triple basis what does that mean it means if you sold this asset if you sold this property okay for more than the original basis so let's see we have we said let's see this is the this is the basis that your uncle paid eight thousand and this is the let's erase this this is the fair market value when your uncle gifted to you six thousand okay now when you sell it what's going to happen when you sell this asset how what's your basis is it eight or is it six well here's what's going to happen let's assume you sold it for nine so if you sold it for nine if you sold it for nine thousand dollar right here if you sold it for nine thousand 
which is about, you know, if you sold it for 9,000, your basis equal, this is an error here, equal to 8,000. Your basis is 8,000. Your basis will be 8,000. Your basis is 8,000. Okay. If you sold it for 6,000, I'm sorry, if you sold it for 5,000, let me show you this line here. If you sold it for 5,000, if you sold it for 5,000, your basis is 6,000. Okay, so notice if you sold it above your basis or below the fair market value, your basis becomes the line that's closest to you. Do you notice this? 9,000, your basis is 8. If you sold it for 5, your basis is 6. Now, what happened if you sold it in between? What happened if you sold it in between? Let's make this purple. You sold it for 7,000. If you sold this one Bitcoin for 7,000, you are in between the fair market value and the basis, then in that situation, your basis is 7,000, you have no gain and no loss. And basically, this is the rules for gift, just FYI, so you know how it works in case you were gifted one Bitcoin. Because again, that happens all the time. When you start an account, they might give you something with zero basis. Let's talk about mining did you mine the cryptocurrency the first thing we want to know is what is mining what does mining mean what are you mining well what does it mean it means using your computer power programming and algos to mine to extract cryptocurrency now what you're doing is you are creating the currency think of uh, of uh, some company uh, some companies that that extract natural resources what they do is they create oil as they create uh, petroleum from the ground and what you're doing here is you are creating cryptocurrency and what they do is they find new currency they create a program to find a new currency and once they find that new currency it gets added to the blockchain so you don't really have to worry about the technicality of it but think of it as they are finding a new currency okay now what does what's going to happen is this let's assume those two individuals are starting are starting those two individuals they are creating one bitcoin and that one bitcoin they well let's assume they created this one bitcoin so they find the algos they created the, the, the special keys for this one bitcoin and they created one unit and that one unit is worth eight thousand today so they created what <coughs> sorry <coughs> i apologize about this so they created one Bitcoin and it's worth $8,000. Now that Bitcoin is added to the blockchain and now it can be traded. It's a new money. Now because they created this one Bitcoin, they'll get a commission. They'll get, you know, for their effort because they created this new currency. They might get, 10, they don't get that much, but just say they, they got 10%. So they got one eighth, actually, not, let's say 10%. They'll get, they got one tenth of that currency. One tenth means they got 10%, so they got one tenth, they got $800 worth of value today because they extracted it today, they created the new currency, and on this day, it's worth 8,000, and because it's acceptable now, it's a new currency, now it can be traded, on the, it can be added to the blockchain, they earned $800 for their effort of creating, they created a new currency, okay? Now what happened is this, because they created a new currency, they earned a fee for extracting the currency. Basically, this $800 is ordinary income. Basically, they, they mined it. They, they are working for it. They earned it. It's like, you remember the first example when, you, when, I, when, when I said, let's assume I am a plumber and I perform the service. As a result, I was paid with cryptocurrency. Same concept here. I am a programmer and I'm paid in cryptocurrency. So I mined the currency and I paid with that cryptocurrency. But let's just go one step further. Before we go one step further, fears are revenue based on the fair market value of the of the date received. Let's assume they took this one tenth of a one tenth of Bitcoin and they bought a computer that's worth a thousand dollar with it. They exchanged it for a computer of a thousand dollar. If they did so, one eighth of a bitcoin equal to eight hundred and they receive something that's worth a thousand, so they, they would have a capital gain. They will have a capital gain on any profit from that one tenth of a of of, of, a, of a bitcoin for two hundred dollars. So first, they are taxed on the eight hundred dollar as ordinary income. Then, if they exchange it for a computer, this two hundred dollar is considered capital gain, whether it's short term or long term, depending on if they waited a year or not holding that currency. Okay.
So assuming John Doe mined one Bitcoin, as a result, received one tenth of that currency. One tenth of 8,000 is 800. Okay, so that 800 is ordinary income. But if you take that ordinary income now and you exchange it for a computer that's worth a thousand, that extra $200 is capital gain. Okay. Now remember the revenue from your business. Basically, you are in the business of mining cryptocurrency. It's subject to self-employment on net earnings. So simply put, you have a business, you have expenses, and if you have expenses, you have to pay self-employment taxes on the net earning. You could be operating as a Schedule C, S, C Corp, whatever business you want, you choose to. Let's talk about a little bit more about reporting issues. If you made any payment, rent, annuities, premium using virtual currency, you are subject to information reporting to the same extent as you make payment in cash. And what's the, the general rule is, if you paid someone $600 or more, you have to report to the IRS and to the payee that you paid that individual that much. So if somebody paid me uh, rent, they rented something from me and they paid me $1,000 for that in virtual currency, the virtual currency was worth $1,000 on that date. Whoever paid me will need to tell the IRS they paid me and they need to tell me that they told the IRS they paid me $1,000. It's reportable. Same thing applied to independent contractor. If you're an independent contractor and they paid you on a 1099 miscellaneous, they have to report that information. The question is, do they need to have any backup withholding? Do they need to take any taxes? Well, guess what? If you don't provide a social security or a TIN tax identification number, then they'll have to withheld federal income tax. Or if they know by law, by the IRS, because you ha they have to hold withheld it from you, then they have to do so. Those are reporting, reporting issues. Uh, one more thing about uh, cryptocurrency is third-party settlement organization. Who are these parties and why do we need to talk about them? Third party uh, that settles substantial number of payment between merchant and customers. Uh, think about PayPal, think about Amazon. Those are the companies that we're talking about here or any company that settled payment. So what happens sometimes, some merchant, what they do, they accept cryptocurrency as payment. And as a result, if they are selling through Amazon, Amazon will have to, will will have to know about this. So Amazon will have to complete a 1099K, okay, disclosing disclosing this information. So when would that third party will have to do so? It's required if they process more than 200 more than 200 transaction, and the gross amount to the merchant is greater than 20,000. So if you sold for more than 200, 200 customers on Amazon and you and the total proceeds more, more than 20,000 and Amazon is settling those payments, they'll have to report that information. Now, why is this, wh where does the cryptocurrency comes into place? The fair market value of the cryptocurrency is included because remember, we have to determine if you exceeded the $20,000, the fair market value would be included. And now this is a yearly, a yearly, yearly reporting. It's reported per month, but this requirement is for yearly. So this is what form 1099K would look like. So you, you have to have 200 plus transaction. And the gross amount has to be two hundred thousand plus for the for the third party to report this information. So let's assume for January they sold they um, you know they uh, Amazon processed three hundred dollar for you in credit card payments, and uh, and you received uh, three Bitcoin. Okay, so they have to find out when you received that three Bitcoin. What was the fair market value of what was the what was the fair market value of the Bitcoin? Sorry, just let me go back there. So they have to determine what was the fair market value. What was the fair market value of the Bitcoin? Okay, what was the fair market value? And include that information, add the information to, the, to your credit card sales. Let's assume it's $500. Well, your total for January is 800 and they have to do the same thing for March, May, so on and so forth. They have to let you know and they have to let know the, they have to let the IRS knows. This way they want to make sure the IRS they want to make sure if you're selling more than 20,000, somebody is, you know, the Amazon is reporting that information to you as well as to the IRS. So basically again, this is for let me go back for, to the beginning and this is for educational purposes. Another tax advice, each each situation, each in, individual is different. Uh, please, if you're interested in, in accounting, tax, audit lectures, if you're a college student, uh, that's what I do for a living. If you're a CPA candidate, I help people pass the CPA exam. Go to my website, subscribe to my YouTube, stay motivated. And if you're studying for your exam, your CPA exam, study hard. And I'm pretty sure this topic eventually will be covered on the exam. Good luck.